Hello and good afternoon. I'm Ai Ching, President of Chinese American Citizens Alliance, Boston Lodge. I'd like to welcome all of you to this once in a lifetime Congressional Gold Medal Award Ceremony and Roll Call Recognition for Massachusetts Chinese American World War II veterans. First and foremost, I would like to thank everyone who had worked tirelessly on the passage of the Chinese American World War II Veteran Congressional Gold Medal Act from the first draft to its signing into law. It took more than a village, a lot of walking on the hill and for the veterans, too many decades overdue and many months more because of the COVID pandemic. On Wednesday, December 9th, with the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi's kickstarting the Congressional Gold Medal Award Ceremony on Capitol Hill, awarding the medal to Navy veteran Tony Moy. Congrats to Tony Moy. We are now poised to conduct regional award ceremonies and celebrations from coast to coast. Today, we are here to witness the presentation of the Congressional Gold Medal to Army veterans Edward G. and George Moy. Without further ado, let's start the celebration right now. Apart only physically, but our spirits together. Enjoy. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hi, I'm Mark Giacano, Chairman of the House Committee on Veterans Affairs. I want to thank the Boston chapter of the Chinese American Citizens Alliance for inviting me to participate 
in today's virtual celebration. Earlier this week, we presented Chinese American World War II veterans with a congressional gold medal. This gold medal is part of Congress's tradition of recognizing the service of our country's traditionally marginalized groups who fought during World War II. With this honor, we are telling a more complete story of the people who fought for the United States during World War II and the personal and systemic challenges they faced. Despite coming from different backgrounds, Chinese American service members fought alongside their fellow Americans with a shared love for their country. They flew bomber missions over Europe. They served on our ships in the Pacific. They stormed the beaches of Normandy. They fought in the Battle of the Bulge and helped liberate Central Europe. Chinese American World War II veterans were, without a doubt, instrumental in helping the Allied forces secure victory. We have two of these veterans in attendance today, and I just want to express to them directly from the bottom of my heart how appreciative I am for their service and sacrifice. Having spent time in Boston while I was in college, I know the spirit of patriotism runs strong here, and these veterans are no exception. When their country needed them, they selflessly stepped up to serve with bravery and courage. In doing so, they helped pave the way for a more diverse and inclusive military, one that includes Major General William Chen, the first Chinese American two-star general. Our country might not have been perfect during World War II, and it might not even be perfect now, but it is full of promise. And our veterans know that's worth fighting for. Hello, my name is Melanie Chan. I'm the national president of the Chinese American Citizens Alliance, one of the oldest Chinese American civil rights organization. Approximately 20,000 Chinese Americans served in World War II and each and every branch of the military, including the Army, Navy, Army Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, and the Merchant Marine. And in 1943, Chinese American women were accepted into the Women's Army Corps in the Military Intelligence Service and were also recruited for service in the Army Air Force. And some became civilian women Air Force service pilots. Although the Chinese during the period continued to face discrimination and racial inequities, they persevered and served with dignity and honor. Many of the stories of heroism and bravery of these veterans remain untold and unrecognized. We sought to recognize their contributions and patriotism and to tell their stories by launching the Chinese American World War II Recognition Project, which successfully advocated for the Congressional Gold Medal for Chinese American veterans of World War II, which resulted in the bipartisan passage of the Chinese American World War II Veteran Congressional Gold Medal Act, which was signed into law on December 20th, 2018. On December 9, 2020, 75 years after the end of World War II, Congress awarded the Congressional Gold Medal to the Chinese American veterans of World War II in recognition of their service. Regional events are being planned for sometime next year once the pandemic has subsided to recognize and present the Congressional Gold Medal replicas to registered veterans or their mix of kin. This will be a wonderful and unique event that the families of the veterans will have the opportunity to experience and learn about how their fathers, mothers, grandparents, or relatives served our country during World War II. This is our time to recognize and acknowledge embrace and remember our members of America's greatest generation. I would like to close by thanking all the Chinese American veterans, men and women who proudly answered a call to defend and preserve our freedom and serve our country during war and peace. 
You have all served as role models and paved the way for so many others. And I am humble and so grateful for your selfless sacrifice and service. Thank you. Our keynote speaker today is Major General Bill Chen, U.S. Army retired. General Chen is a third generation Chinese American and he served as a career army officer for more than 32 years and retired as a major general in 1993, the first Chinese American to wear two-star rank in the U.S. Army. As a major general, he commanded the U.S. Army Missile Command during Operation Desert Shield, Desert Storm, the Army's largest deployment and combat use of Army missiles in history. And after his military retirement, he moved to the private sector working for United Defense. To all veterans, men and women, living and deceased, on this Veterans Day, thank you for your service, bravery, and sacrifice. November 11th has a special meaning for me, not just because it's my birthday, but because my family has three generations of military service. In the first generation, my father was a World War II Army Air Corps pilot in the China Burma India Theater. In the second generation, my two brothers and I were in the Cold War and Vietnam War. And currently, in the third generation, my niece is a, is a helicopter pilot in the Army, in Iraq and Afghanistan war veteran. I know firsthand what families and military spouses go through. To all of you, my thanks and gratitude for your dedication, support, and sacrifices. You are the unsung heroes supporting our service members. To all the owners of organizations and businesses, whether profit or nonprofit, large or small, our veterans possess many administrative, technical, and leadership skills applicable to civilian life. Kindly seek out and hire our veterans and gain the benefits of their skills and experiences. I'd like to now talk about some Boston history and pay tribute to Massachusetts veterans related to the Congressional Gold Medal, the highest civilian award bestowed by the United States Congress. On March 21, 1790, George Washington was presented with the very first Congressional Gold Medal. He received this honor for the liberation of Boston, the first major city liberated from British occupation. Today, Boston's public library's most prestigious piece is George Washington's Congressional Gold Medal. Over the years, Massachusetts veterans have been recipients of the Congressional Gold Medal. The most recent Congressional Gold Medal award ceremony was held on July 20th, 2020 to honor the World War II crew of the USS Indianapolis. On July 26, 1945, the, United, the USS Indianapolis delivered to Tinian Island in the Pacific key components of the first atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. Four days later, a Japanese submarine attacked and sunk the USS Indianapolis. There were 15 crew members from Massachusetts on the USS Indianapolis. The actions of three of these particularly stand out. Ensign Harlan Twibble from Gilbertsville, Massachusetts had just graduated from the United States Military Academy. He saw the chaotic situation, took command, and gave the order to abandon ship. Commander Stanley Walter Lipsky was from Northampton, Massachusetts. Despite being severely burnt and losing sight in both eyes, he made sure every sailor he could reach had a life vest. He died in the water. Lieutenant Commander Lewis Haynes from Chelsea, Massachusetts, a medical doctor, aided the men throughout in the water. 
all 1194 crew members were recipients of the Congressional Gold Medal. On December 20th, 2018, the same day that the President signed into public law the Congressional Gold Medal for the USS Indianapolis, he also signed into law the Chinese American World War II Veterans Congressional Gold Medal Act. Approximately 20,000 Chinese Americans served in World War II. Forty percent were non-U.S. citizens, yet they volunteered and were drafted and proudly served as Americans. Chinese American veterans were awarded every Medal of Valor up to and including the Congressional Medal of Honor. A direct quote from the public law states that the United States remains forever indebted to the bravery, valor, and dedication the Chinese American veterans of World War II displayed. We are currently awaiting the official announcement for the Speaker of the House Washington, D.C. award ceremony expected to be in early December 2020. Currently, there are 90 Chinese American World War II veterans from Massachusetts and veterans whose next of kin reside in Massachusetts registered as Congressional Gold Medal recipients. Unfortunately, many have already passed. There are only two living veteran recipients from Massachusetts. Seaman First Class Tony T.D. Moy, who served on board the USS Vicksburg in its bombardment of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. And Technician Fifth Class Edward G., high-speed radio operator, 304th Signal Operations Battalion, Pacific Theater. We look forward to a New England Regional Congressional Gold Medal Award Ceremony for these Chinese American World War II veterans to be held here in Boston shortly after the Speaker of the House ceremony. To all Massachusetts veterans and to all veterans across the country, thank you for your service. We are grateful to you for preserving our freedom. Hello, let me welcome you again to this special Congressional Gold Medal Award Ceremony for our Chinese American World War II living veterans in Massachusetts. My name is Esther Lee, National Executive of CACA and past president of Boston Lodge. It is my honor to emcee this event today. I would like to thank all our VIP speakers. Congressman Mark Takano, Chair of House Committee on Veterans Affairs. Melanie Chen, our CACA National President. First Chinese American two-star Major General Chen for his keynote address. I hope you have enjoyed the first half of our program so far. Now, let's continue our program with the presentation of the Congressional Gold Medal to our three Massachusetts Chinese American World War II living veterans. The first recipient is U.S. Navy Seaman First Class Tony Moy, who was also one of the recipients at the virtual official Congressional Gold Medal Award Ceremony in DC on December 9th. Seaman First Class Tony Moy, thank you for your service as a gunner on board the USS Fixburg in its bombardment of Okinawa and Iwo Jima. Congratulations. Thank you, General Chen.
Our first presentation is to Army veteran Edward G. Currently in Milton, Massachusetts. Army technician, fifth grade Edward G. Thank you for your service as a high speed radio operator, Company B, 304th Signal Battalion, Pacific Theater. Congratulations. Thank you, General Chan. I'm honored to receive this award and appreciate the efforts of the CACA for organizing this event. And I also want to thank General Chan for his leadership role in making this possible. Thank you. George, we really wanted you to also be a part of the ceremony with your brother, Tony Moy. As we did that in front of the Wakefield World War II Museum and how proud it would have been to see two brothers, both in World War II, both from Fall River, Massachusetts, recognized and honored with the Congressional Gold Medal. So George, thank you for your service with the um, Army Security uh, Service as a uh, instructor in the Morse Code American Theater. Congratulations. Thank you, Jen Chang, uh, for the honor to receive the Congressional Code Medal of World War II of the Chinese American uh, veterans. When I was a uh, uh, volunteer for the uh, United States Army in 1945, the first exposure I had to uh, International Morse Code was uh, listening to the news uh, from uh, the radio uh, with uh, Lowell Thomas. And he began his uh, new cast with that is the call letters of his sponsor, uh, Sonoko. And so with that introduction and with, with subsequent uh, possession of a helicrafter ham radio, I listened in on other uh, most calls you know, that were being sent through the air at that time. So when I joined the service in 1945, uh, the background note was that uh, I had the, that interest. So they then uh, assigned me to be an instructor uh, of International Moscow. And I was in there for the duration of my uh, enlistment. But the thing that really stand out was that before my activity in uh, the facility called Wind Hill Farm Station, I had learned that there was a previous group that had intercepted a message that the Japanese delegation had sent back to Japan after their visit to the fortification along the English Channel on the European side for you know, stopping any invasion from England. And because of that uh, message, the uh, Allied command under Eisenhower had decided that rather than going directly across the English Channel, that they will then go down further south to Normandy and Omaha Bridge uh, for the invasion of the uh, European continent, continent for the uh, reconquering of the European uh, theater of the country. So with that inter interesting uh, background, uh, I then, of course, uh, uh, retired from the uh, army and uh, have been benefit uh, from the United States government because of my service. And thank you very much for everybody and to specifically uh, for 
uh, General Chang. Thank you. My name is Wilson Lee. I am the National Representative of the Chinese American Citizen Alliance Boston. I am a uh, descendant of a real, of a World II veteran. My grandfather was a World II veteran, and so I was five other uncles who served in World II. It's our honor to present to you a special guest, Major General Gary Yi, all the way from Washington, D.C. Gary's father and uncle were both World II veterans. You're on, General. Hey, Wilson. Well, thank you for inviting me to be part of this regional virtual ceremony of the Congressional Gold Medal. Uh, long overdue. In fact, uh, it was passed in 2018, as we know, and it's now 2020, almost 2021. And, and so finally, thank you for your leadership. Uh, I think the, the Boston Lodge uh, for its leadership in hosting this event. I want to especially thank Bill, Bill Chen, my good friend. Uh, good to see you, Bill. You're looking good. And um, let me just say a few things. Uh, first of all, um, you know, to Tony Moy, Edward G and George Moy, um, you know, thank you for your service. And I know that you recognize that you represent the thousands of soldiers, airmen, sailors um, who could not be here today uh, because uh, this medal came, this recognition came late uh, and uh, for your service 70 something years ago. Uh, as we know, the, uh, the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 was in effect until 1943. Uh, and by then, many Chinese American men primarily were already enlisted in one of the services. And so even though in 1943 um, that was repealed, the sentiments and the way that Chinese Americans, Asian Americans were treated in this country uh, was not fair. Uh, there was blatant discrimination uh, in the 1940s. And sometimes when we think of like the good old days, um, maybe we have to pause and think about what those good old days really were. Uh, the good old days for Asian Americans were oftentimes filled with discrimination, blatant, and barriers to entry. And if not for the nearly 20,000 uh, Chinese Americans that served during World War II, like my father, like my uncle, like, you know, Tony, Ed, and George, um, you know, things like two-star Chinese American general officers wouldn't be here today. That's, you know, um, pretty, you know, plain text. If not for those 20,000 that served during World War II, serving well and honorably, um, we would not be here today as, as general officers in, in the United States Army. Uh, so, so we, today, my generation stands on the shoulders of people like Bill Chen, they came before me, but especially those of you uh, that fought during World War II and served our country honorably. So thank you for inviting me to be part of this very special event. Thank you for the leadership of the Boston Lodge. Uh, this might be one of the first regional events following uh, the event on the 9th of December with Nancy Pelosi, uh, Speaker Pelosi. So uh, my hope is that by, by the Boston Lodge uh, hosting this event, others will see that it can be done, it needs to be done, and we can't wait much longer. Uh, because as we know, uh, you know, um, World War II veterans uh, today are passing every day. And so we need to get the recognition out to, the, to them and their families. Uh, so Wilson, uh, Wilson and Esther, thank you for reaching out to me. Thank you for having this and uh, back to you. All right, so next, uh, please join us for the roll call as we honor our Massachusetts Chinese American World War II veterans who registered at CA WW2 Veterans Recognition Project website.
Hello, thank you all for participating in this program. A special congratulations to our living veterans, Tony Moy, Edward G, and George Moy. Thank you for your service. We should all continue to check and be current on the Chinese American World War II Recognition Project. The website is www.caww2.org. The CAWW2 Recognition Project is planning for a Congressional Gold Medal Award presentation and celebration in Washington, D.C. in April of 2021. It also depends on the situation of the pandemic and what is allowable at that time. Also, we, CACA Boston, would like to hold our New England Regional um, Congressional Gold Medal Award presentation and ceremony in May. Please look for our emails regarding this event. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Before we conclude our program, we would like to thank Massachusetts Department of Veterans Service for providing the music and presentation of colors by our military units. And now, um, I would like to make a small remark. Um, yesterday, I received a phone call from a mix of kin and his father actually is a Massachusetts, but he did not know about our events. So I would still like to pay the respect to his father. His name is Wa Ji Wong and service as US Army. And thank, you, thank uh, him for his service. So now next, I would like to see if any family members from living veterans that would like to say a few words. We would like um, to limit to maybe two per family and two to uh, three minutes per person. So if you raise your hand, um, I will uh, allow you to talk and let me know if you want to do video as well. Okay. All right, let me have David from Post 328. You want to say something? Yeah, yeah, I just want to thank CACA for all the works to make this possible. And I also want to thank the World War II veterans give us the freedom. Without them, I'm sure we'll be in a different situation. And meantime, I'd like to congratulate all the recipients for their dedicated service for this great nation. Thank you. All right, okay. Um, now, um, Alex? Yes. Alex Moy? Yes. All right, turn my video on, possibly. Uh, okay, great. Okay, uh, I just wanted to add my thanks uh, to CACA Boston and, and General Chen and Yi for recognizing all the veterans, uh, including my dad and my uncle Tony. And I know this means a lot to all of us, especially to them, uh, to my, my Auntie Joe and his kids, Connie, Linda and Marty, which I don't know their video was working a half hour ago, of course, so I'm just sorry they weren't able to join. And then also on behalf of myself and my sister, Angela, and our late mother, Louise. Um, I know my dad had the privilege to go to uh, DC several years ago on an honor flight from Detroit and it was to visit the World War II Memorial. And it was quite the honor for him to be able to do that. Um, and he also, we also, the family took them to Pearl Harbor a few years ago also to visit. And he was wearing his World War II cap. And so he was rather, uh, rather uh, recognized by everybody, you know, and thanking him for his service as, as we went around the, uh, the, the facility. Um, we were really looking forward to going to DC. Um, and I know that we will if once this pandemic is over and uh, hope that it's soon and everybody can go. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, I, I again want to thank you for having this regional event because I know that means a lot to them. 
And by the way, these guys are talking about bananas right now, in case you're wondering what they're doing here. So uh, this, this is when my dad and myself, and we, we had gone to go visit Uncle Tony at home. And uh, these guys were hours. They were doing this, just talking and talking and having a great time hanging out and seeing each other. And uh, yeah, it was, it was fun to listen. My, my cousin, I think Connie or Linda, recorded the entire conversation. And it was just... It's hilarious. So anyways, these brothers, I'm, I'm sure they thank you. And I, I wish uh, Marty and Uncle Tony were able to, to join us on video. Hopefully they've been able to watch. But thank you very much again for all the work you've done. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, this is uh, uh, Daryl Lung. And my father is Roland Lung, who served in World War II. Um, so I was just listening in on the, uh, on the meeting. Um, well, I'm trying to think here. It's all new to me, but, um, yeah, it's a very cool honor. And, uh, I'm myself and am a veteran myself. Um, my father served in the Navy and I have served in the Navy for seven years. And, um, this was about 20 years ago. So I served as a Navy medic for seven years and, um, uh, so when I found out my father was eligible for the medal, I was surprised. I didn't know anything about it. Uh, it's been very cool to follow the whole thing and learn more about this. And um, very long overdue, 75 years, which is surprisingly to me. But um, but it's great that it's happening. So, uh, But thank you to all the veterans who have served. Um, greatly appreciated, and thank you for... Chinese American um, Americans to have volunteered and make this happen. Thank you for your service as well. No problem. Question is, uh, you? I was surprised they they said that they plan to hold a live in person the Washington event in April of twenty one. They're going to try to make this happen. We don't know. Oh, we, we, we don't know. Um, oh. Yeah, General, would you like to uh, make some remark on this? Uh, yes, that's the current plan to have a uh, ceremony and award to yeah. uh, living veterans and next of kin in the April time frame. But all of us, as you well know, is subject to COVID restrictions. Yeah. Uh, restrictions yeah. on large group gatherings, etc. Yeah. So nobody, yeah, can, nobody can really say for sure, uh, but sure. we, we all recognize that we could have a celebration, and uh, okay. to kick that off. Uh, probably the best would be to start it off uh, in Washington D.C., and then uh, mm -hmm. respective regions can have their own. Uh, ceremonies. Okay, I'll keep an eye on it and see what happens. Uh, okay. I think, uh, I think that's what I have to say at this point. Okay, thank you. Okay, so right now, Marty is online with Tony. He called me. I'll try to put the phone near to the laptop and see if you guys can hear him. I'll do my best, okay? So hang on. Okay, hi, hi everybody. Yeah, this is Marty Moy, and I'm sitting here with uh, Tony Moy. Okay, uh, so I have Tony here, and uh, um, I'd like to have uh, Tony answer a few questions, like, uh, for instance, so uh, first of all, thank you, uh, General Chen. Thank you, no. the ACA, for this. Uh, fantastic honor that you've uh, worked so hard to be able to recognize the World War II veterans uh, 75 years later. Thank you so much. Uh, my father, I know that uh, my Uncle George is um, uh, ecstatic because of this. But uh, what I wanted to do was just ask uh, my father a few questions. Uh, for instance, like, uh, Tony, why did you enlist in the armed services in the first place? Well, I see what Japanese did to uh, China when I was a kid there, and uh, so I want to help a little bit, uh, square this, this thing out a little bit. Yeah, just to help, help the uh, 
of the U.S. because he was over in China. He saw what the Japanese did to uh, China uh, when he was going, leaving China and coming back to the United States. He saw how much destruction there was in Shanghai and some other uh, cities there. So when he came back, he wanted to see what he could do to help out. And then when they bombed Pearl Harbor, that was like the uh, second thing. So he could like help out the U.S. and the Chinese against uh, a common enemy. So, um, so, so, uh, Tony, how was, uh, um, what was your, uh, do you remember, uh, your first engagement? What was your first engagement in battle? Well, the first engagement was, I was scared. And after the, when the battle begins, and I was more relaxed. Okay, good. Yeah, because now you're you're in the thick of things. You're you're focused on your job, and that's all you can think about. Correct. Okay. And how was Okinawa? Okinawa, oh boy, was was in a terrible battle. That was the fiercest battle uh, I've seen uh, to TV, to films, to, to uh, newspaper, and I I could I witnessed the. Uh, the people coming to land, the Marines coming to land, and then the uh, the uh, uh, volcanic uh, ashes. And when they get on the beach, they they uh, step on the ashes and step one step, and then two steps back. And then uh, we have uh, uh, I have a, a look out at that time, and I see the. Uh, uh, the, uh, the flight raised at the end of the, uh, uh, battle. At Iwo Jima, yeah. So what he would do is they, he, as a lookout, um, when the guns were hiding in Mount Suribachi, the Japanese would open up doors. They'd stick the gun out the door, they'd fire, and then they close the door back. They'd pull the guns back and close the door. And the lookout, what my father would do is find where the smoke is coming out from right. the gun, and then they tell the uh, the gunners to go after those locations. Yeah. So that's what he was doing as a spotter. Yeah, and also uh, the, uh, we see a Japanese uh, man. He was going around from one hole to another. So uh, oh, we don't want to kill him. So we want to have to go see where he entered the hole, and that's where we really put the pressure on with firing. Yeah. So, Dad, uh, Tony, what was the most important event of World War II? Well, well that was the uh, the end of the, uh, the war. And we, at the, uh, well, the first time that we uh, cheer, and it was, we were working, so we were patrolling the uh, mouth of the uh, Tokyo Bay, and then when uh, the peace treaty was signed, and then the plenty of cheers going around. Yeah. And that's one of the happiest moments. Yeah. yeah. And then finally with the uh, Golden Gate Bridge, coming back home to the mainland. Oh, gee, you know, coming home, we reached home finally in San Francisco. We were, our ship was decorated with balloons. We go under the Golden Bridge, Golden Gate Bridge, and then we have a parade, 30 days leave. So we, we, we're, we're having a parade, and then naturally, everybody knows that after the parade, they're going to have uh, 30 days leave. So naturally, the, the talk and tall guy in front was going pretty fast, and we have to run in the back to catch up to them, so it was fun. And then when we get back, and then and I went uh, I went home, and then when I get home, and my father was busy talking to a customer, and I tapped my father on the back, and, and he turned around, looked at me, and he didn't recognize me, so he turned around back to the customer, and then I tapped him again on the back, and he looked, uh, and he looked, and then he finally recognized me. He said, oh, he yelled, said, that's my son. So he introduced me around, and he didn't recognize me because I was a deckhand. I was all tanned up. 
Yeah, so that was funny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, thank you, Grandpa. Thank you, Dad, for uh, you know for us, all us kids in the whole U.S. because you're part of. Thank you, thank you, Marty. Thank you, Tony, for your service. So um, we still have a few more minutes. So um, anybody uh, would like to say a few words before we uh, finish the program here? So if I don't see any hand raising, then I guess um, I will end the program. I will end the program here. So again, um, thank you for attending this event. And we really hope it could be in person, but we understand because of the um, safety of the pandemic. So I'm um, looking forward to see you guys in person. And um, this uh, was taped and is right now is live on Facebook. And um, I will be sending out the link to um, all the attendees. So um, have a very Merry Christmas and we'll love to see you next year. Happy New Year as well. Thank you. And thank you all the veterans for their services. Goodbye.